How to install Red Hat OpenShift Local in macOS? Red Hat OpenShift Local, formerly Code Ready Containers, is a convenient way to have uh, one OpenShift Kubernetes in your laptop. And this is uh, super easy to install. Are you curious? I'm Luca Berton and welcome in today's episode of Ansible Pilot. OpenShift Local is designed for local development and testing on an OpenShift 4 cluster, so not for production. The OpenShift Local requires at least uh, 4 virtual CPUs, 8GB of RAM and 35GB of storage, so pretty affordable for a notebook nowadays. Now let's jump directly in how to install the Red Hat OpenShift Local in macOS. Let's begin our adventure jumping on uh, our favorite browser and search for uh, OpenShift Local on the search engine. You can search, use your favorite one and this will uh, direct you to the development red.com website. There is a specific page for this product and probably uh, there are some reference that was called Red Hat Code Ready Containers. There are a few information, also some blog posts, uh, how to set up everything. So basically is a full OpenShift cluster that runs inside a virtual machine. It requires you a Red Hat uh, account you can create for free, nothing nothing to worry about and this is a great way to experiment directly in uh, your system. In my case uh, I'm using the local but there are other ways of testing OpenShift the cloud, install on your data center or uh, local one. Uh, there are a huge variety of operating system. In my case I have uh, um, MacBook with M1, so let me download the ARM64 version. It is called Arch64, is the same stuff, and also let me save it the uh, secret. You can save it online, so just for uh, copy and paste from a TXT document, or you can copy directly on the browser. Now we need only to wait for the download to proceed, and at the end of this, we are going to install the software. This is only 200 megabyte, 200, 300 megabyte, so not a big deal. And actually, you are downloading the CRC um, utility that uh, download the full image of uh, OpenShift. The download speed is affected by the performance of your network uh, and also the performance of your system. Meanwhile, you can take a look on the website. I really recommend you to open the documentation that is pretty exhaustive about this product. So this redirects you to the official product documentation and with a getting started guide. This is a pretty wide document, but uh, there are some interesting things on the installation part that clarify what are the minimum requirement, the hardware requirement, and how to move forward on the next steps. As you can see, the newest MacBook with M1 are fully supported, M1, M2, whatever, uh, M1 Pro, M1 Max, uh, there are a lot of things. At the end, uh, you got finally this uh, install setup. This is a standard Mac Macintosh uh, installer, so it requires you to insert the user password because you need uh, uh, some privilege to install the software. Okay, at the end of the day, you got the utility installed. So basically, you are installing the utility that uh, is going to download all the necessary file of the OpenShift local. Now you can move to bin and move forward for the next step. Next step will be using a terminal, so let's jump in the terminal. Welcome on my Macintosh terminal. After the install we have this utility that is called CRC. As you can see this is a tool that manages local OpenShift cluster. So uh, let me take a look, there are a lot of parameters, uh, the version gives you 
an overview about the latest OpenShift version 4.11.3 and Podman 4.2.0. Um, as you can see, the utility uh, have a lot of options. The one that is more popular is status, but check it out, that machine is not running and they say that uh, with CRC start you can start it out. Well, we don't have this uh, file that is uh, actually the one uh, that, uh, of a virtual machine, so we need to download and set it up with CRC down setup. It's asking if we would like to share some anonymous statistics of usage and I accept it, I think it's a good idea to share with developers. And now the actual download began. This is a bundle file that is pretty huge, as you can see, 3 gigabytes of data, so we need to wait to download, actually this is the real image, it's a virtual machine that runs inside your notebook and has a full Red Hat OpenShift local. This step is going to take a while, it depends by the performance of your network and basically download the bundle and expand it on disk. This is a good approach because uh, if you mess it up somehow, you know, something that happened in the development stage, you can always clean your environment and return to the original bundle state. So this is a pretty convenient way, thank you Red Hat for uh, do some experimentation and also some development of code. Let me be honest with you, I was speeding up the video because the actual download time was very slow on my machine, uh, it depends by the network performance, but at the end of the day you got this result, the bundle is successfully downloaded, you got expanded and you are ready to move on the next step. Was uncompressed, as you can see, here we go, we are ready to uh, start our code ready container. What? Oh no, now it's called OpenShift local. As you can see the CRC tool is taking care also managing the daemon and all the necessary check that this what we downloaded was consistent. Now we have a prompt and we are ready to move to the next step of the installation, actually starting the virtual machine. How to start the OpenShift local with CRC start. And on the first launch is asking for a pull secret. Do you remember of it? It was in the browser. So now let's jump back on the dashboard. Back on the Red Hat console is super simple to get the pull secret. Just copy the pull secret and paste in the terminal. Yay, easy peasy. Back on the terminal, we can paste using right click, you can use a command V in a different way. But anyway, you see a lot of uh, text that now was hidden and the startup is actually beginning. The first step, startup is taking a while because there are a lot of uh, configuration underneath some uh, also operator that need to, to be run. So please expect a lot, very long time. As you can see, some components take, are taking the lead and one by one are spinning up in order to get your OpenShift local ready to go. But basically you don't need to do anything, just wait till uh, uh, the CSC command return you the credential, the username and password to connect to the cluster. So just wait and a lot of text will appear on your screen. Again, I would like to be honest with you, I speed up a little bit this part of the video because uh, really it took a while also on my latest MacBook. So now the certification authority was set up in place and some operator were progressing. They take really a lot of time and now you see the same result but in an accelerated way. At the end of the day you got uh, two username, one cube admin, that is uh, the full user, and one developer. As you might uh, uh, guess, the administrator have a full privilege and the user has only limited privilege to create uh, the project and spin up some pods. 
the administrator could install more things and basically you have a broad vision of a cluster. This is a great success because right now the OpenShift local is actually running and we can uh, interact with, with that using the command line interface or the web interface. As you can see, let's start up with a command line. So let me copy this uh, environment. Let's set up the environment. In this way, we can use the OC, the OpenShift command line utility to interact with a cluster. The first thing is actually to log in inside the cluster with a developer user and now, as the prompt suggests, we can create, for example, a new project. We can also use other commands, but... Uh, oh, damn it, I'm a bit rusty on it. Let's take a look on the full OC command line. As you can see, there are plenty of options, uh, so you can move forward in your OpenShift project. Please don't worry too much if you make mistake. For example, OC status uh, command doesn't exist, but you can uh, always uh, uh, move forward and try. This is a development machine. For example, OC version show up the version of a client and the Kubernetes version 124 that we are actually running. Uh, you can interact with this system using the OC command uh, commands and the CRC is actually managing all the OpenShift local environment. So basically with OC you give a command to the cluster and with CRC you control all the OpenShift uh, local installation. This gives you, for example, the CRC status now is giving you an operating uh, uh, that is online, are uh, running, and you can take uh, also um, the actual version that you are running. Just in case you need to switch from the developer to the administrator user, let's use the CRC start utilities so you are able to quickly remind what are the connection options and also access the web interface using this URL. Let me copy and paste. Back on my browser, let me paste in the address bar the OpenShift local URL. This is a self-signed certificate, so you need to uh, authorize the private connection. And Chrome is, uh, uh, is saying to me that uh, this URL might be not trustful, but I trust of it because it's a local one. And as you can see, is showing up username and password. You can use the same one in from the console, for example, developer as a developer password, and you are able to actually connect to the cluster. Now you are, this is the full dashboard. As you can see, it's the first time I'm connecting. So there is also a get started guided space that show up the perspective switcher that gives you uh, some uh, more idea how your cluster is made and the user preferences as well. As you can see, the easier way is also to take a look of all the running project. There is none at the moment, but uh, the sooner you move forward with the automation, you probably add more. You can customize the uh, your user and you can also take a look about the running version using the about option. This is a Kubernetes 1.24, the same version that was shown in the command line interface. Sometimes it's more convenient to use the web UI for having a, a, a visual overview of what is uh, going on. As you can see, everything is empty because this is a completely fresh scenario. Uh, you can also switch from developer to administrator as you can see, administrator has more power and could actually manage the cluster, also start installing more uh, software and operators. So this is the web UI, as you can see, is very comprehensive and probably is more uh, useful for a beginner user. Now you know how to install Red Hat OpenShift local Kubernetes in macOS was super easy and now you are ready to enjoy this technology and also to test how to automate with 
Ansible. Thank you for watching, if this video was useful for you, give me a thumbs up and let's keep in touch on the next episode of Ansible Pilot and have a great day!